Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Series WX Wash Processed Ecuador from Colfea Circular. And there's the bag right there. And Colfea Circular, based out of Gothenburg, Sweden. And this is the first of four Gala Morales Colfea Circular coffees we will be featuring over the next several weeks. This one is also the most straightforward of those coffees as it's simply a wash process couture. While the other coffees we're going to be reviewing are considered a little higher end, and I'm quite glad at least one of the coffees are considered one of their more standard offerings. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this one turned out. As this right here is day 38. And recipe we went with for this coffee was a 16 to one water to coffee ratio. Brewed at 93 degrees Celsius, about 199 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the Chemex, which indicates a more medium grind. Rose profile for this coffee, so Colfea Circular is notorious for roasting on the lighter side of things, holding true to the term Nordic Light, as they are one of the lighter roasting coffee roasters in Europe, which is to say that this coffee is on the very light side of that spectrum. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. D15, first impression, and we opted for the V60, and the cup was surprisingly intense to the point that it reminded me a fair bit of the Gallo Gesha that we'd reviewed last year, which was also a Colfea Circular Gallo Morales coffee, and that one offered a very strong strawberry attribute with an intense sweetness to a near natural sense, and that's the first impression I had of this one as an addition to that. It was slightly tart, and it was an interesting first impression as I didn't necessarily know what to take away from it. When I opened the bag of coffee, I definitely got a fair bit of that strong aroma and intensity and I felt that this coffee was always going to be that way but this first impression while it was extremely strong I did not necessarily know what was to come as on day 18 we ran it through the Chemex and it continued to yield that intense strawberry aspect that was very reminiscent of what I would describe as that funky 2019 Paraiso coffee that we had had from black and white and it's a coffee that I reference every so often when it reminds me a little bit of a very funky strawberry candy or a very funky candy in general, as it has a very strong funky intensity to it. And I reference and highlight that coffee specifically because that's the first one I ever had that really skewed that heavily in that direction. And even five years later, it's a coffee I reference so much, mostly because of how memorable it was. Extremely strawberry candy forward to the point where it's near off-putting. Plenty of the listed honey and herbality as well, with it being very wild for a wash processed coffee. Day 21 through the April Brewer, and it felt a little better balanced as there was notably less of the intense strawberry candy, but much more of the slightly savory herbal components to it. Very unique sweetness, possibly in line with the listed dark honey, as it felt candied in that regard. An unusual and unexpected tartness to the cup as it continues to remain wild and very intense, even with the strawberry aspect ever so slightly toned down. The rest of the flavor profiles in this one were very much amped up as well. Day 23 through the V60 with Colfea Circular's recipe and the cup is skewing the most it had in that strong funky candy sense as it's offering an extreme strawberry candy forward cup as it's the most pronounced it's been up to this point. There is plenty of the herbality as well, and it is in line with what they have described as a listed time note. There is a slight tartness that's also present, but for the most part, the strawberry candy component remains a little overly intense and slightly overbearing as well. Day 26, through the Chemex with Colfea Circular's recipe, and the cup continues to offer that very intense, funky strawberry candy component with plenty of the lingering dark honey. The strawberry aspect continues to remain a little overbearing as there wasn't necessarily any reduction in the overall intensity on this day. If anything, the cup was getting a little heavier and a little bit more pronounced in that sense. Day 29, through the V60 with a diluted recipe and lower temperatures, and I felt like at this point I couldn't necessarily improve this coffee, that it was always going to be that very wildly intense strawberry candy-like attribute. The funky strawberry continues to dominate the cup with the herbal intensity as a strong secondary characteristic. There's also a strong citric attribute to the cup as the entire profile continues to skew very strong in terms of the intensity. Day 32 through the Chemex, and this was interestingly the best the cup had been to this point as the intensity was ever so slightly toned down, but we're still talking about a cup that is wildly intense from start to finish. In addition to that, the funky strawberry is maybe not quite as pronounced, even though it's still just very heavy within the cup as the lingering dark honey and herbality also remain very present throughout. 
Day 35 final notes, we have one more try and there is still little to no toning down of this coffee as there's a wild mix of funky strawberry and spice creating a overbearingly intense cup. A slight tartness and bitterness from the citrus also gives the cup a little bit more depth and intensity throughout. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And we have um, four level fives. So let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the finish level five. So I think that's something that you might imagine is present within the cup. Interestingly for me, I wouldn't necessarily say that it is that funky, strong strawberry candy aspect to it, because while that is extremely intense right at the start, it does finish a little bit more in terms of those citric tones, those tart tones, those herbal tones. So I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the finish regardless of how it is, but it is a very, very long lasting finish and you're definitely still feeling a little bit of that funky strawberry. The issue is you're also feeling a bunch of other things within the cup. Sweetness, level five. Yeah, this cup's wildly sweet and it's overbearingly sweet and it's sweet to the point where it's not necessarily as clean as I would hope. So having that very strong sweetness, especially skewing in that extremely strong strawberry candy scents, wasn't necessarily something that I enjoyed a lot. So level five, it is a very, very sweet coffee. Spice, level five. As I kind of mentioned, that time that they have listed on here, whatever that herbal note is, it's got a very strong spiced quality to this one right at the start, enough to the point where I don't think I've ever scored a coffee level five in terms of the spice, but as I was drinking this coffee, I said, yeah, this thing's just got so much intensity in that sense. Very fruit, level five. And this is one of those things where honestly, it could be like level six or level seven, but this tasting wheel is relative. It definitely scores that level five. The funky strawberry candy in this one is just something that can be hidden. Like you open up this bag of coffee and you just get that extremely strong aroma. You brew this cup, it's there while you're brewing it. And then you get the aroma from the brewed cup itself. It's there and then you sip the coffee and you're like, wow, that is intense. And that's this coffee in a nutshell as the berry fruit, that very strong strawberry candy aspect definitely there at that level five and definitely would be higher if the tasting wheel went any higher. Then we have a bunch of level fours. We'll start with the florality level four. So yeah, it does have a little bit more of a citric floral sense to it. And in addition to that, it's just kind of got a, I want to say a more generic florality to it. It's a little difficult to describe with so many other flavors in this one that makes it a little bit more tricky to pick it out. But level four did seem applicable for this one. And that's why I put it side by side with that citrus at that level four. As I mentioned that there's a very strong citric component to this one as well. So those two things scoring very high in that sense. Savoriness, level four. Yeah, this spiced intensity is also a little bit in a savory sense. So that scored very high in terms of that. And Usually the savoriness scoring on a level four is reserved for overly tomato like Kenyan coffees, but this one right here with that very strong spice-like quality to it also scored at that level four. Then a couple of level threes will go with the acidity level three. So yeah, even with all this being said, it's not necessarily the brightest coffee and I feel like that might be attributed to the fact that I toned this coffee down as much as I could or tried to anyway, and that included the brightness. Though I don't think this coffee was ever meant to be an overly bright coffee to begin with. Stone fruit also at a level three, and it's a little bit more tricky for me to tell because as I sip this coffee, I'm just kind of tasting all of the other notes, but when making this tasting wheel, I felt like it was justified at that mark. Caramel level four, that points out the kind of honeyed aspect to this one, that dark honey, and that's the other part of the florality, by the way, the dark honey, but the candied honey aspect as well, and in addition to that, the candied berry aspect, that's where the caramel comes into play. And then the bitterness also there at that level three mark because with all of these things present, especially that tartness, it did give it a little bit of bitterness to the cup as well as it offered that in a stronger than expected sense. And then two last things worth discussing. We'll go with the body real quick, level two. Even with all of that, I think a little bit being the Chemex, the body on this one was a little bit more lighter bodied, I think, than expected going into it. But if I'm being completely honest, body is one of the last things I was paying attention to within this coffee. And then probably the most important and interesting thing is that clarity, that cleanliness at a level three. And it is really hard for me to score anything on a level four that has this level of funkiness to it, even if it is a wash processed coffee. Look, the flavor profile in this one was about as defined as you could possibly imagine because it was so intense. Everything in this cup was so intense, you were tasting it clear as day. That being said, if there's a very strong funkiness that there was in this one, it's very hard for me to score at a level three. So in one regard, the definition of the flavor profiles scores this one at a level five for clarity, and then the overall funkiness in this probably scores at a level one for clarity. So I feel like the middle ground is right there at that level three. And as I'm looking at this tasting, well, I think it's a pretty good representation just of the intensity that this coffee offered. All right, 
So my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, I'd have to be completely honest and transparent and say that this one is probably my least favorite Colfea Circular coffee that I have ever had, mostly because it offered such a strong intensity of a flavor profile that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And that's my first takeaway I ever had from any Colfea Circular coffee was oftentimes the flavor profile is so intense, pronounced, that I don't necessarily like it, mostly because it's a flavor that I don't like. I remember having a coffee from them that was extremely ginger forward and being somebody that doesn't particularly like ginger, I wasn't the biggest fan of that coffee. That's the impression I have of this one. I don't particularly like that wild strawberry candy taste to it. And given that that was in such strong abundance, complemented by a citric component that I didn't necessarily like or a spice component that I also didn't like, this one really didn't offer a whole lot of things for me that I was a big fan of. Just very strong intensity and a slightly overbearing sense. But I do have to say, this coffee was unique. It's one of a kind. I've never had a coffee like this. And it's really surprising given that this is just a very generic standard wash processed coffee from a standard offering. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to, if you've liked any of those wild out there experimental lots, especially the ones that are maybe on the more strawberry infused side of things, I feel like this is actually a better version of that, which kind of speaks to those coffees in general. But if this one's just a regular straight old standard wash processed coffee and it's offering that level of intensity, then that's interesting to me because it goes to show that wash processed coffees can offer just as much of that wildness as any of those experimental processed and even infused coffees can, because this one was really out there. I have a very hard time separating this experience from that experience I had in 2019 with Black and White's coffees and some of the other coffees I've had that have also been infused recently because this one right here just had that very strong intensity to it throughout. So if you enjoy those, that's the best direction I could point you towards in this one. I want to add the other things, the spiced quality, the citric quality, but I think you should really focus on that very strong strawberry candy attribute and I also think that's the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. With this right here has been a review of the Sirius WX Wash Processed Ecuador from Colfea Circular. Thank you for watching.